It's really annoying, isn't it? Basically, it means your computer's a wimp. Here's some tips on how you can sort this out. Check it out. First of all, tip one, this is quite obvious. Turn off all other programs. If you've got the internet on there, turn it off. Why do you need the internet when you're making music? If you've got Photoshop on there or iTunes uh, Player, turn that off as well. Close down Final Cut. You don't want to be looking at that. Get rid of that. So uh, all these others I need here. But you want to turn off everything that you're not using. So you've only really got Logic running, ideally, and maybe your app for your sound card. Even get rid of preferences. All of this stuff takes up space on your, or takes up cycles, should I say, on your processor and uh, is work for it to do, essentially. So you want to make life easy for it, right? That already is going to ease things up. Uh, time for tip two. So tip two is adjust your sound card settings. So click on Logic Pro here, go to preferences, go to audio. And these are your sound card settings or your audio interface settings, whatever terminology you prefer. This is the main setting that you want to be looking at. Um, if you've got it set very low, try moving it up uh, to this sort of 128.256 area. If it's re set really high, try moving it down. That is the, the buffer, the amount of samples that it's using to buffer in and out of the processor. What you do want to be aware of is as you turn up the amount of samples, it's going to give you more latency when you're recording into Logic, okay? As it will tell you there. Moved up to 512, it's actually 25. Um, in this window here, there's another um, setting that you can use that will work quite well. Is this summing. High precision, uh, it does sound great but it, it eats a lot more CPU. So make sure you've got it set to standard precision um, if you want your tracks to play back. I would leave the processing threads. Uh, the process buffer range can sometimes be worth um, adjusting, but I generally just leave it on large. Once you're done adjusting these settings, just hit apply. Okay, so tip three is bounce in place, otherwise known as BIP. If we have a look at our mixer here, here's all of our really stacked tracks with loads and loads of uh, processing on. Um, go to some of your tracks that have got a, a lot of the processing on that you, you haven't touched in ages and you're really not going to adjust them any further. So let's say if it was this kick drum here, we can basically just bounce down all these effects so they're one piece of audio. So the computer isn't working to process all of these plugins every time you play back. It's already processed them and you've recorded it out as a piece of audio. An important distinction there to, to learn. Um, so the way you do this is you go to the track, you right click it like that and go to bounce in place. Click on that. It will give you these options here. I would leave them as they're set here. It will create a new track and it will leave the source. So you've still got your original track if you need it. You don't want to bypass the effect plugins. You want to leave them on. The audio tail, leave that. And you might want to include automation and pan, but that will still be on the track. Leave normalize as it is and just click on OK. That will take the strain off your computer by bouncing down this entire audio track with these plugin settings already on it. So your computer isn't doing that hard work every time you play back. So when that's done, we've got a new track here called Kick Bip, Bounce In Place. And uh, you've got your original kick drum there, and you've got your bipped kick there, which has still got the sends on it that, that the original kick had. So what you want to do is get rid of, save your project, obviously, and uh, remove all effects plugins. That will simplify that down. So then now you've, you can just use this new bip kick instead of your old kick with all the processing on top. Great, eh? Hey? So you can monitor your CPU usage in Logic by monitoring up here on the display where it says CPU. It's showing you how much level is being used at any one time and also showing you your hard drive inputs and outputs. Generally, you play a song. It 
it's your CPU that is doing all the work, as you could see there. Uh, the hard drive isn't doing much work. So what we did there with the bounce in place is transferring that load from the CPU to the hard drive, essentially. So you can do that with multiple tracks in a bit more of a reversible and quick way by using freeze. So freeze basically turns that file into an audio file with all the effects bounced down in the same way that bounce in place does. But it's very reversible and user friendly. There's just one button there to freeze and unfreeze. Um, the catch is you still have to wait for it to bounce down, unfortunately. But you can do it with lots of tracks at once. So you could quickly freeze the entire drum kit. Because I've got tons of processing on that. Of course, we love a bit of that. And once that's done, you just press play. Then it will freeze. And it embeds all of your uh, plugin settings onto audio files and plays those audio files back rather than doing the processing on the fly which places a load on your CPU. So there's no limit to how many tracks you can freeze as you can see, freeze the entire drum kit there. Um, the only catch is that you can't adjust any of the plugins once you've frozen them. Um, so as you can see there, it's coming up with that little frozen icon to show that you can't adjust them. But you can adjust any sends from that track and the volume and stuff like that because don't forget this is basically now an audio file with all of these plugins embedded inside it. Um, so that will transfer the load from your CPU over to your hard drive. If at any point you need to turn off a track so you can adjust it, it's quite easy to do. You just turn off the freeze on that track and then you get all the plugins back. And then you can uh, make your adjustments as you need to. If you want to keep a bit more of an eye on what's going on with your process and your hard drive, just double click on this window here. By the way, if you can't see this window here and your display looks a bit more like this, then just click this little arrow and uh, I always go for custom. Uh, if you right click this arrow here, you can go to customize control and display and then you can select what you want to see on this whole top menu bar here. Um, for the LCD, I've got my custom set up there uh, with what I want to see. But you can add a whole bunch of stuff into there as you need to. But I find what you can see there is enough for me. Um, so double click on this and it brings up a bit more of a detailed window of your hard drive and your processing. While we're up here, if we go to low latency mode here, it adds in a button up here with a little picture of a clock on it. This will also help with your CPU load as it's a way of turning off a lot of the more CPU hungry processors in one go. So all the ones that are adding a lot of latency. So for me, I wouldn't use that unless it's an emergency because it's going to just turn plugins off. So you're not going to hear the sound that you were going for uh, with those plugins. So to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But it's there if you want it. Thanks for watching. I hope that was useful. Um, let me know in the comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. See ya.